Good afternoon. We all well? Yes. Oh, we're ready for lunch. Okay. Look, uh, a little story to get us going. When Sam had one of his ideas of creating a uh, retail media summit, um, I jumped at the chance. I said, yeah, well, of course I'll, I'll, I'll come and present to that. What I hadn't figured out at the time were three things, and they're really important things. One, I'd be staring at my colleagues on the front row. <laughs> Two, I'd be staring at my clients and partners throughout. And three, I'd have a train going over my head on intervals of every six to seven minutes. <laughs> If that had been the case, maybe I wouldn't be here, but I'm going to try my very best to bring um, a little bit of insight to you this afternoon on the pivotal role of omnichannel marketing in transforming your retail media network. As you can see, we worked very hard to keep that short and snappy. <laughs> so, I think I'm probably fair in saying that um, no one here today would disagree with the notion that an omnichannel strategy is pivotal to the success of any marketing, not just retail media. And the previous talks that we've had this morning have shone a light on the importance of not just physical, but a digital presence as well. But tying those two together, and recently coining the term fidgetal, and that was very difficult for me to rehearse last night, is, is, has been a real uh, growth area in the last uh, 12 to 24 months. And it's also no secret that the way we buy has changed beyond recognition. Customers are discovering and purchasing brands across more channels than ever before. And in fact, 50% of customers engage with around three to five channels each time they make a purchase. Now, as consumers, of which we all are in the room, we increasingly bounce around. We're looking online, offline, and more often than not, we're frequently engaged with multiple touch points at any one time. So quite simply, shoppers are no longer shopping in a linear way. They're moving from one channel to the next, one step at a time. It just doesn't happen like that anymore. They're switching quick, and they're moving fast. One minute, they're looking at browsing updates on Instagram. The next, there's a scroll and a click, and they're on a site to buy. With this, we've seen a huge proliferation of media channels. And as a result, it's proving harder for marketeers to guarantee reaching a sizable number of their target audience in any one channel alone. Now, making an omni-channel approach even more important as we start to build our plans for the future. So I need you to cast your mind back, back in the early 1990s, and I've got a list of clients that can. Don't worry, I'm not going to list you. A brand advertising on TV during, say, something like Coronation Street, which for those that are American in the room is a UK TV soap and a cracking one at that, could reach 27 million viewers in one advert. And at the time, that was over half of the UK population, reached within just 30 seconds. Now, obviously the internet took off and the digital revolution then happened, which meant that the two-way channels were consumed changed dramatically. Consumers started being able to pause, rewind, and skip ads completely. Consumers began dual screening, and more TV channels, radio channels, print titles, they've all come into existence. Now, in fact, the number of UK TV programmes with more than 4 million TV viewers at any one time has halved in just the last eight years alone from nearly 2,500 back in 2014 to just 1,200 in 2022. Now, earlier this morning, Katie and Cindy took us through some brilliant insight. And in their consumer research, they pointed towards a couple of pieces. The modern consumers are shopping across both in-store and online, and they expect a seamless experience across these channels. But if we're being honest, and, I, and we should be in this room as marketeers, we often use the word omnichannel a little too generously. And that is perhaps because multi-channel is also in play, but also we're not necessarily looking at all the touch points at one place. So if we look at the three definitions on the slide behind me, the reality is that most of us are on the left. Some of us are in the middle, and very few of us are constantly delivering against the right box. So if brands and retailers get this right, not only will it result in a better experience for their customers, but it will also translate into better business results as well. A recent study by Google suggested omnichannel strategies drive an 80% higher rate of incremental store visits. And omnichannel shoppers have a 30% higher lifetime value than those who shop using only one channel. So to quickly summarize my introduction, the customer journey is no longer linear. We need to connect capabilities across in-store, .com, and other paid media. And measurement capabilities need to do exactly the same. So how can brands and retailers deliver a better omnichannel retail media experience for their customers? Well, the first is through carefully developing a diverse media proposition. And we've touched on the media landscape and the fact that it's in developing incredibly fast. It's crucial that brands and retailers not only stay up to date with the latest developments, but are not afraid to be the first to trial new channels, along with media capability. 
and in an effort to understand what is working, what isn't working, and understand how they can improve their total marketing mix. Now, the example here is from the UK. The UK have taken a first, uh, store-first approach, and it's arguably ahead of North America in, so in store's media offer at this time, with around 80% of grocery sales still going through a store in the UK. So retail media networks here focus on maximizing their own in-store assets, and this increases the profitability of the retailer's RMN and drives a greater ROAS for the CPGs. Now, member pricing has also recently become mainstream in UK grocers, following success across the pond. Now, Tesco has seen club card usage go from 60% of sales to the launch of club card prices to now 80% of all transactions. And as a result, club card users have surged from 14 million prior to the launch of club card prices to almost 22 million more recently. But this is still in the shadow of Kroger in the US, where 90% of transactions are loyalty linked. Yeah, 95% are loyalty linked. Crucially though, this is not just a data strategy. It's it's being used to accelerate retailers' RMN capability. For example, traditional in-store cardboard marketing is being elevated to digital formats that can be bought both pragmatically via retailer RMNs, and this is unlocking spend not only from those stock CPGs in store, but also incremental brand spend from agencies for third-party brands. And I'm talking here about non-endemics, brands that operate within the automotive, leisure, and financial sectors. All are taking an interest in how they can maximize the opportunity that retail media networks present. And I wanted to pause and just put a little bit of a spotlight on the work that we've uh, completed with, uh, with, with Boots. And we do have Boots in the room today. Um, we partnered together two years ago, and they were the first retailer in the UK to use loyalty data to target Boots customers across both Meta and Connected TV via their Audience 360 product, which is now live. Crucially, this also enables closed-loop reporting, enabling brands to understand the effect these channels have on sales of their products in store, but also on Boots.com. Other RMNs have since followed, mirroring North America in terms of their retail media network capability. Now, this diversified media offering enables brands to not only reach customers where they are, but also understand more about them. And omnichannel strategies allow brands and retailers to collect more customer data from various touch points on that journey. And it's this rich data set that helps them to understand their consumers' behavior better and offer personalized experience, product recommendations, and promotions, ultimately delivering a better experience for the shopper. But this diversified media offering also enables brands to achieve more objectives by reaching customers across more of their path to purchase. Now, it's rare to find a single touch point that achieves multiple objectives brilliantly. For instance, while first-party data-targeted social media might be great for creating brand awareness, an email channel might be more effective for post-purchase engagement. So omnichannel strategies allow retailers and their brands to utilize the strengths of each channel for optimal results. And Ollie is in the room, and I'm sure he'll love to chat to you about it a little bit later on. Another example is from our friends at Coop, who are also in the room. We've already heard from Dean earlier today. And thanks to the shared socially responsible values of the retailer and their customers, Unilever recently partnered with Coop to launch their new ice cream with a mission, and that was co-created with refugee entrepreneurs. As an MPD launch, a core objective was to strike the balance between reach and impact. And the result was a campaign that spans across the full customer journey, from awareness through to consideration and conversion, and highly impactful creative, a point that was very clear in the research this morning. And it was also the first co-op campaign to run across Deliveroo, Just Eat, Uber Eats, taking advantage of not only the impulse category, but the growth in quick commerce in the last uh, several years. So, in light of that growing number of potential media opportunities available, it's also becoming much harder for brands to traverse a very complicated ecosystem. So it therefore becomes even more important to allow for ease of access into all of these opportunities, resulting in one comprehensive view of campaigns. Now, the outside circles here represent all the teams that brands typically interact with when it comes to investing in a retail media's network, from in-store to dot-com and brand and trading. Often, there's also different people or teams within the brand itself who are responsible for managing the relationship with these different teams. And the result is something that feels very disconnected and leads to a media sales service with often ad hoc small activations, which are resource heavy for retailers and don't really move the dial for brands, rather than a true connected co-marketed campaign. 
So, to avoid this, while it's important to maintain channel specialists, retailers and brands need to have one point of contact who links in with those specialists and manages to oversee the campaign from start to end. And having that single point of contact makes it much easier to execute 360 campaigns that are planned strategically, executed brilliantly, and evaluated robustly, enabling better results for CPGs and a virtuous cycle of investment into retail media networks over time. Now, the one way that retailers have enabled this in the last few years is partnering with an external and impartial media agency to act as one front door for brands and to help manage and run their retail media networks. For example, when SMG set up these agencies listed on the slide behind me, we worked with the retailers closely to ensure they were centrally aligned, reflecting both trading and marketing priorities. Often the two shall not meet. Our job is to try and make them so. And this further contributes to better, better omnichannel plans. For example, creating events that align to the marketing cal calendar, which again seems like an easy win but is so often missed. In addition to having a single point of contact, having one centralised place where everything is housed, from toolkits to master plans and our valuations, well, that can really fast forward the ability to create successful omnichannel campaigns, moving from needing hundreds of spreadsheets into one consolidated platform. Although I'll let you into a secret, we do still like a we do still like a spreadsheet. For example. SMG, our proprietary software plan apps, has rid us of 90% of those spreadsheets, I'm excited to say. And it's acting as an all-one solution to manage a retailer's media network. And it enables both brands and retailers to simply and easily see all the inventory available, manage their campaigns, and understand what media has been booked, where, where and for how much. And crucially, and this is the important bit, to understand what's working and what isn't. It also gives a holistic view of the customer journey across the channels. So as a result, brands can accurately attribute sales and their other KPIs to specific marketing activities, therefore helping them optimise marketing spend and hopefully a better return on investment as a result. So that all sounds great in principle, but how does it actually happen? Well, it comes to life in the form of an example I'm bringing from the Very Group. I'm delighted to say another retailer that was with us this afternoon. HP recently partnered with the Very Group to execute a back-to-school campaign which happens also to be live right now. And they wanted to capitalize on the period to drive awareness plus demand for HP product, recruiting new shoppers into the computing category at very.co.uk. Now, threefold act is the single point of contact between both HP and Very, working incredibly closely with Very's internal teams to ensure the campaign aligned back to Very's wider above the line brand campaign. For example, Whilst HP had, be, had a bespoke tagline which was based on a very customer insight about the category and aimed to demonstrate the versatility of a HP laptop, the same theme, the look and the feel and even the models were used on Very's own above the line too. So as a result of this collaboration, Threefold were also able to unlock channels for HP that usually aren't available to brands and even HP even featured in their uh, above the line campaign too. The result is an omnichannel campaign that has already increased HP's market share by elevating their reach and creating consistency for customers at every touch point. But equally, it's also made the tills ring for the very group. So, the third part. It's not enough to simply utilize a diverse array of channels, connect them together and call it a day. If it was, <laughs> I wouldn't be employed. Ultimately, if the chosen touch points don't achieve what you need them to, then they don't reach your customers when we won't see the business results as a, as, a, as a result. You therefore need to ensure your media planning remains objective and customer-centric. And the execution has changed over time, and I can, I'm sure it probably will as we move forward, but the strategy remains static. Despite the growing number of potential media opportunities available, the strategy therefore remains the same. You need to reach the right shoppers with the right message and using the right media to do so. And the SMG, we have a simple framework for this. We call it the who, the what, and the how. It's a simple marketing framework that we follow for every retail media campaign, from beauty all the way through to biscuits. And you also need to think about how you tell your message across the path to purchase. On the left-hand side, you've got more brandable media, so higher dwell time, which gives you more space to communicate, and therefore you can have a better branded conversation to catch attention with that shopper, engage them, educate them, educate them, not no, execute them, uh, that'd be great pause, uh, insight and drive, and drive traffic. But when you get to the fixture at the point of purchase, there's a lower dwell time, there's less space to communicate. 
We then need to be moved to a more templated media structure and really focus on the, the net benefit of the product in place. And a good example of how this happened was with Fenty and Boots Media Group earlier this year. Their recent Match the Nation campaign was a great example of an obje objective-led, customer-centric media planning which led to more successful omnichannel campaign, which not only met just business objectives, but also created happier customers as well. Now, we are a little on time, so I'm not going to go through the full case study. And I've also got lovely Georgia Martin in the room, who's the partnership director, and I daren't take all her limelight. This was a fantastic campaign that involved several, several partners, both within Boots, our media partners, our third-party partners like LiveRamp, to really make sure the campaign was super focused. And the results have meant that we've managed to explode that going into the years ahead. And uh, it's a really, really exciting time for both Boots and the media group offer that we have. So. To summarise, a successful omni-channel media, retail media campaign essentially means a carefully developed and diverse media proposition. It needs to have ease of access for a comprehensive campaign view, and it's object-led, customer-centric in its format, and ultimately, hopefully, something that delivers a return for both retailer, brand, and customer. Thank you very much.